Comrades, we live in dangerous times. We have a federal government that, without shame, governs in the interests of the few. We have a government that simply does not support any notions of public and democratic space, whether it be in broadcasting, transport, communication or health. But it's the area of public education that I want to concentrate on in this speech. It is our belief that the Abbott government has declared war on children and young people across this nation. It has delivered a budget that intends to entrench advantage and to shift the costs of education onto individual students and their families. It is determined by way of policy to limit opportunity. In short, it simply does not believe that government should provide education Instead, it sees education as a commodity to be purchased. And it sees education also as an opportunity for corporate profit. Say. The federal budget brought down in May has heralded an across-the-board attack on education that includes the loss of over 70% of scheduled Gonski funding. And we are seeing public assets turned into private wealth by this government, but that wealth is increasingly concentrated in the hands of a very few. And in this context, I'd like to put the cuts to school funding into some sort of perspective. This year, the combined wealth of Australia's richest 10 Australians is $74 billion. That is five times more, five times more than what six years of Gonski funding would to deliver to schools. Ten people's wealth is more than the interest of 3.5 million students in all schools across this nation. The Business Review Weekly Richest 200 list puts their wealth at 197 billion this year, up from 177 last year, an increase in one year alone of $20 billion one year's wealth for 200 individuals is nearly one and a half times more than the six years of Gonski funding for 3.5 million children. Australia's largest coal mining company, Glencore Extrata, gained $15 billion in profits over the last three years. And during that period, it paid zero tax, not one dollar. This one company's profit is $500 million more than the cost of six years of Gonski. Just cuts to the growth, just cuts to the growth in spending on schools funding will cost schools almost $30 billion over 10 years. But there is one area of growth in education in the May budget. The chaplaincy program requiring religious chaplains to be placed in schools was allocated an additional $245 million over five years. We can compare the chaplaincy program with the funding cuts to students with disability, some of our most marginalised and disadvantaged students in our system. In stark contrast to the additional funding for the chaplaincy program, the government's student with disability fund funding promises have been unequivocally broken. Rather than promise increases from next year, no funding is allocated for students with disabilities for the years beyond next year. I want to just quickly mention early childhood and TAFE as well. In early childhood, we see cuts to the, to the uh, loss of the childcare benefit and cuts to the guaranteed provision of 15 hours of quality preschool. In TAFE, we see a massive cut at the federal level on top of what's happening to state cuts as well. There's been $1.5 billion cuts to the vet sector. We have seen tools for your trade, nearly a billion dollars cut. We have seen 10 programs that were about skills development, 10 programs abolished in the May budget and many of those programs were to increase basic literacy and numeracy skills and upskilling people and existing workers. 
In higher education, of course, in higher education, we see uh, Abbott reimagining the kind of Australia that he wants. He's moving to dismantle the system of higher education as we know it. And if they succeed, no longer will entry into public university be determined on students' academic ability, but rather on their capacity to pay. In the new privatised higher education market, merit may matter, but money will dominate. The university sector, already under enormous cost pressures, will see dramatic and unparalleled cuts. It's estimated that as a result of the May budget, somewhere between 35 to 40 per cent of university places will have their funding cut. And to make up for the loss of government funding, universities will be allowed to completely deregulate their fee structures, which will result in huge hikes in student fees. But not only will there be a massive increase in fees, a compounding interest of up to 6 per cent, it will be imposed on existing as well as future students. We will see, as a result of the May budget, higher education research funding cut, nearly $2 billion estimated to be cut out of research funding, and we will also see the privatisation occurring and accelerating as private for-profit providers gain access to public funding. So in short, from cradle to career, an entire generation of Australians will see education costs soar. As a nation, we will see social and economic inequality further entrenched. But, but, we will take this fight into every single community across Australia. If the Abbott government has declared war on our nation's young people, we are up to the task of defending our children's right to free, universal and secular education. In every, in every town, in every suburb, in every city, Australians will fight and teachers and their union will be there with you every step of the way.